In this tutorial, we'll combine the brush stroke tools with geometry nodes to create an animated painterly effect that cycles through your strokes over time. By the end, you'll see how to set up a system that can instantly animate and alternate your brush layers, opening up a lot of room for creativity in stylized renders and animations. Creating brush strokes. For this demonstration, we'll be working on just the character's dress to keep things short. The character has been converted to an alembic cache so that Blender won't need to compute the rig and modifiers, just the brush strokes and the mesh itself. If you've got good hardware, you can try this on your rigged meshes. The process will work the same way. We'll start by adding a fill layer from the brush strokes tool panel and set the flow direction by drawing on the mesh. The surface panel allows us to control the shape, density and masking of the strokes, while the material panel allows us to assign colors or textures to the strokes, as well as control opacity, and choose among stroke styles and effects. We won't go into detail on these settings here, but you can watch the links in the description for a primer on how to use brush stroke tools in more depth. One key setting is the seed parameter in the surface panel. If we want the strokes to be moving, we can use the expression number sign frame to quickly change the seed value over time. Let's make sure deform is ticked, and if you'll be working on your rigged character, ensure animated is ticked as well. We'll make a duplicate of our fill layer and make a copy of its material. We can turn off visibility for the previous layer directly from the brush strokes tools panel. Now we can change the style and colors of the strokes as well as their surface properties however we like. We can add a draw layer that allows us to manually paint strokes as well. For this type of brush stroke, we can use the duplicates and spread field to add more strokes around the original instead of painting too many strokes, but that's up to you. In the outliner, you'll see that each stroke layer is parented to the object it was added to. Let's select the strokes and add them to a collection called Dress. You'll notice that for fill layers, we get an additional stroke object with flow at the end of its name. Let's take these and move them to a separate collection. Geometry node setup. With our collections hidden, we'll create a cube and delete its vertices. Then add a single vertex by holding control and right-clicking on the viewport. Then snapping the vertex to the origin point of the scene. We'll add our geometry nodes to this object. In the geometry nodes window, we'll add a collection info node and assign our dress collection to it. And make sure separate children is ticked. Next, we'll add an instance on points node and plug our collection info node to the instance's input. While the geometry output is connected to the points input, Let's enable Pick Instance, then add a Scene Time node. We'll plug the frame's output of this node to the Instance Index of our Instance on Points node. What's happening now is the Instance on Points node is cycling through all the strokes in the Dress Collection with each frame in our timeline. We can slow it down by adding a Math node and dividing our frame's output from the Scene Time node by a number we like. The number we choose dictates how many frames will pass before another stroke from our Dress Collection will be instanced. If we want to alternate the effect with our original mesh, we can add another collection info node and assign our character. This time, separate children should be unticked. We'll add this collection to the setup using the Join Geometry node. Next, we'll add a switch node and plug our new collection info node to either the false or true socket and connect the frame output of the scene time node to the switch socket. The switch node only understands values of 1 and 0, so we'll use modulo from a new math node to convert the frame number to either 1 or 0. We'll set the second value to 2. To further offset the switch, we can add a compare node set to greater or less than and find a value that gives us the timing we want. And now we have our core set up. The final result was made just by creating new strokes and adding them to new collections, then adding them to our geo nodes using a join geometry node. And that's the full workflow for animating brush strokes with the scene time node in geometry nodes. The key is organizing your stroke layers into collections, then using scene time to cycle and switch them in your node tree. From here, you can experiment with more collections, layer styles, or even mix in procedural effects for something really unique. Thanks for watching.